Hi, this is Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We are in P5JS. This video is about making patterns. We can use all sorts of different shapes to make patterns. We can vary it with color. We can vary the rotation of things. We can use general randomness or we can use Perl and noise randomness, which is a type of smooth randomness. This video is geared to beginners, though I'm assuming some sort of general knowledge of P5JS. But if you are a beginner, just a warning, I'm going to be throwing a lot of ideas your way. I hope that's a good thing. Maybe you'll catch 90% of what I throw at you. So let's get started. All the patterns I'm going to show you are going to be on a grid system. You might place objects on the intersections of the grid, or you might place objects in the center of these grids, or you might do both. But we won't have these lines. We'll comment those out, control backslash. So here's a very simple pattern. To make a grid like this, we have two for loops, uh, one for the width and one for the height. So we start at position 0, 0 at the top left of the canvas, and we go the width of the canvas. Instead of adding one each time we go through the loop, I'm adding a certain amount. So here I made a variable called space, and I'm going 50 each time I make a dot. So I can increase this to 100, and you'll see that the dots get farther apart. We can make a pattern like this. This is just lines that are either going this way or this way randomly. So here I've got a random variable uh, between 0 and 2, and if it's less than 1, then I'm going to draw a line, and this is going to be a diagonal line uh, from top left to bottom right. So let me just comment out this second line here, and you'll see that it's drawing all the lines that way. And if I comment this out and then comment this in, you'll see that this is drawing all the lines that way. Now I also have some lines down here that are going this way and this way. Right now my randomness is going from zero to two, so these lines aren't showing. Uh, but if I change this to between two and four, then I get lines like this, so it's ignoring these lines and only doing these lines. Or I could do 0 to 4, and now I get something like this, which is pretty interesting. And of course, every time I hit play, I'm getting a different randomness. Now that was using regular randomness, but this one is using Perl and noise randomness. And you'll notice that it's less chaotic. You'll see long stretches of this diagonal line rather than a whole bunch of variation. This part where I'm doing the lines is the same. Uh, the for loops are the same. It's just the randomness that's changing. So here I'm using the I and the J like I was before, but I'm multiplying by this resolution number. The resolution is here at the top, and this is basically saying how quickly I want the Perl and noise to change. So if I change this to 0.2, it's going to change more quickly and you see it gets closer to just complete randomness whereas if i put this to 0 0.002 i almost get all straight lines but they're not always going to go this way if i hit play again there we go i get something else so i'll put that back to that maybe if i do 0 0.01 and that looks pretty interesting Another thing we could do, which I know is a little weird, is the size and the space don't necessarily need to be the same. So if I made the space 50 and the size 30, you'd get something like this, which maybe you think is a little weird, but it's something you could do. We could also make the space a lot smaller than the size. And oh, that's kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting that. It's fun playing with this stuff and getting things you don't expect. Here's another type of pattern. In this one, I'm using some ASCII characters that I found. So I found this at this website. I'll link to that in the video description. So I copied these ASCII codes right here. So I'm varying the type of shape. There's four different shapes. And then for the color, I've got an array of colors up at the top uh, called COL. And then I'm filling with one of those five colors from the array. I like this one because it looks like some sort of quilt, like it's a fabric of some kind. You can also use other ASCII characters like these to make a pattern like this. Here's another pattern maker. This one makes triangles. It's either going to make triangles like this, or it's going to make triangles like this. And this is dependent on Perlin noise to make the triangles. 
I've got two different noise fields here, noise one and noise two. To get a second noise field, you would add some large number to the second noise field. So, so I'm adding it to the I times resolution and to the J times resolution. So I've got four different triangles that are being drawn here. Let me comment out the ones at the bottom. And so you see that these triangles here and here are the ones that are like this. And both of these triangles, the colors and the shape of the triangle are using the first noise field. And then I'll comment out the first set of triangles and leave the last set of triangles. And you'll see that the second noise field is controlling these triangles, the shape and the color of them. For the color, you'll notice these are all monochrome. I'm using HSB mode, hue, saturation, brightness. I've got full saturation, brightness, and alpha, but the hue is what's changing. So it's a color wheel of 360. I'm using 100 of that 360 for each color palette. So first I get a starting color value using random 260. And so that's going to get me a starting color that is either from zero um, and it goes up to 100 or it starts at 260 and goes to 360 or anywhere in between. So I take my noise value, which is a number between zero and one, multiply it by 100, that gives me my range, and then add it to the color start number. Now here's a more advanced version of using triangles. I'm not gonna go through everything here, but this is using a color table. I've given the triangles some alpha. I've made the triangles different sizes. So there's a lot more going on here. You can see it still can produce something similar to that last example, but then it can also do stuff like this. So while I'm not gonna go over all the code for this, I will leave a link to this in the description, along with all the other examples I've gone over. Here's another pattern maker. This one is making triangles. Now, if we change the spacing of this, uh, let's say we change it to 50, we get these crosses. If I change it to 30, you get something that looks like this. So that's kind of fun. For the next one, I'm gonna show you something that uses a curved vertex to make a, basically a flower petal. So the curved vertex takes a number of points and makes a curve out of it. So I've got a slider here so you can see as I move these points around, like so, the curve changes. Here you can see one of those petals and I'm rotating that petal 90 degrees so that I get basically a full flower. But if I rotate those 45 degrees instead of 90, then you can see I get even more points. And I made a slider here. The first slider is for spacing so I'm increasing the spacing here. The second slider is for internal spacing. As I draw each petal, how far apart are they from each other? And so I can increase that. And then this is the girth of the petals. So I can make them thicker. So this is fun to play with. I can do like this and I get all sorts of interesting shapes. Play with this a little bit more. So for the slider, I'm creating a slider and I'm giving it a variable. It's the space slider is the first one. And then down here, I'm taking the space slider value, calling that space. And that is what is being added when I'm going through the X's and the Y's. Now for the sliders to work, you need to be getting the value in the draw function, but I didn't want to be redrawing this canvas constantly in the draw function because it does take a lot of processing power to do this. So I put the drawing of this into a separate function, function draw shapes, and I'm only going to this function if the slider value changes in any of the three sliders. So that's what this if statement is doing. I have to translate to the XY position. And in order to translate and then rotate, I first have to use this push function. Now that is gonna change what I'm using in the curve vertex because I'm not gonna be using XY. And the reason for that is that once I've translated to this XY position, now where I've translated to is 0, 0.00. So the only thing I'm using in the curve vertex is the internal space variable and the size variable. So when I start my curve vertex, I do begin shape. When I end my curve vertex, I do end shape. And then I have to pop, and pop is basically untranslating. It's saying we're gonna go back to where we were before. 
it also resets the rotation. Then I've got this one. This is using rectangles. The rectangles can be different sizes. The rectangles are also being randomly rotated 45 degrees or 90 degrees. If you do use 45 degrees or 90 degrees, that means you first need to change the angle mode to degrees. This one is not using any Perlin noise. I'm just using randomness. The colors are RGB and I've got it doing mostly blue colors here, but a little bit of random red and green in there. Here's another one. This one is making colored rectangles. The rectangles are varying in size based on randomness. So they can be size one, two, three, or four uh, wide or high. Now, if I were to change this to say 10 and maybe two, now you get something like this, which I think is interesting. Or we can reverse that, say, make this one 10 and this one two. We get that. This one looks really nice. Now for the colors, what I'm doing is I've got a starting R, a starting G, and a starting B, random 165. And when it comes to the fill color, I'm doing random between that starting number and that starting number plus 90. So if my starting number is 165, then the R is going to be between 165 and 255. Whereas if my starting value is 0, then it's going to give me an R between 0 and 90. So this is yet another way of getting a monochrome color palette. Now I also have in here the ability to rotate the rectangles. So if I do this, we get something like this, which I think is interesting. Um, let's make it only 90 instead of 45. So it doesn't look a lot different then. So let's put it back to 45. So I think that's pretty interesting. And then this one, uh, I think this is the last one I want to show you. This is just a Perlin noise field. You've probably seen this before. We're going through the I's and J's and using some noise. And then we're making small rectangles. The rectangles are size three and they're spaced apart by three. But see what happens if I increase the spacing and the size. So I'll make this 14 space and seven size, and you get this, which I think is kind of interesting. Now, if we were to take the red and put that to zero, so the Perlin noise is only affecting the green and the blue, you get something like this. So that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you got something out of it and weren't completely lost, but you can look through all the examples that I've left in the video description. If you like this video, you can give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. I love to read your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.